I built this thing to be moved. It is a metal frame. The beautiful thing about having a metal frame house is you can move it multiple times and it's not going to wear and tear like a wood frame would because I knew I was probably going to move this multiple times, even though I said at the beginning that I wasn't gonna do that or, well, I just, you know, I know myself too well. All right, guys, today is an epic day. I got Jen. You guys got coffee? Yeah. No, I'm good. I'll have to get some later. Nick, Exploration Vans, uh, helping me out today. Appreciate it, Jen. All along for the ride, helping out. And obviously, Penny Lane. Penny, Penny Lane, everybody. We're moving the tiny house today. I hired these guys to come out. They got bigger trucks than I got. And they're going to help me get the tiny house down my driveway because it's rather steep. And I don't think my F-250 will be able to do it. So I hired the same guys that did my clearing, which is Morgan Construction, Morgan Landscaping. We got some little few pretty more things to move and we'll get the camera going and you guys can see this thing take place. Trust my truck, bringing it to Nick's, but getting it down this slope is uh, something we're just going to hook up a truck to the front of it. And I think they're gonna chain it off in the back so you can bring it down slowly. There's a the Morgan Construction crew right there. They're plowing all this stuff out of the way. I'm not gonna lie, I'm nervous as all hell right now just because, you know, this is a scary endeavor. These guys know what they're doing. I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about just things can go wrong. Right, Jen? Always. Yeah, there it is. All right, they're about to hook up. We're literally just gonna pivot around. They're gonna bring it this way, and I think they're gonna try and get this truck past the house. And just in case they need to, we can tie off the back end so it can ease its way down the hill. So. They're saying the one ton, that's a one ton truck right there. They're saying the one ton can definitely handle it going down by itself. So we'll see. They're gonna put it in four low. This is why I hired these guys to do this kind of stuff because I don't, I don't trust myself. All right, I gotta cut the camera, bye. All right, so the house is obviously down off the driveway. All is good, except I screwed up because I didn't have the proper ball receiver. You can see here right on the thing, it says a two and five sixteenths, two and five sixteenths ball that you need for it to hook up properly. Directing traffic out here as well as, you know, watching my tiny house. I don't know what happened. I, I, I know I pulled the tiny house up here with my truck. I just don't remember what ball we were using. I have a two inch ball receiver that is inside my truck, but I guess two and five sixteenths obviously is bigger than two inch and a two inch inside of a two and two and five sixteenths is just, it'll, it'll come right off. And I, you know, going over one big enough bump. We don't want that happening. I have no idea what ball hitch I used on the way up here, but I don't have it anymore. It could have been my dad's, I guess but it is what it is. So luckily Nick is here helping me from Exploration Vans. He has his truck with him. And so he was able to drive down to the store and pick up one, but <laughs> he just came back. And unfortunately he got the wrong uh, sleeve size. So we have to make sure we get the right sleeve with the right ball on there and uh, and call it good. It's been a process. Um, we started at about nine o'clock this morning. It's now, 
it's almost 11 um so we're gonna get this kind of kind of going over here and i gotta come back to this property today which is an hour and a half away and i gotta get some stuff that's up there i gotta i got a couple solar panels that are up there i got my generators up there All right, so that was the move. Um, that was entertaining. Last night, I was like, I think we rolled in um, right around three or 3.30. We started the day around nine o'clock in the morning. Myself and the people that helped me move, I took them out to dinner. And by the time we were all done with that, I was just exhausted. So I didn't do any video, I didn't do anything like that. I just was like, I'm calling it. <laughs> I'm calling it a night. Everything went successful. Wish I took a photo of everything that was in here because everything, I put everything back pretty much, not everything. It's a mess right now, but I pretty much had everything lying on the floor right here. So I took everything off my shelves right here and I put them into large um, like tote bins. And I didn't even fill up two tote bins, but I had the two tote bins. I took my computer down that was up in my crow's nest area. I put that back in its box so it could travel securely. Everything that was in the bathroom, I kind of just laid on the ground or I took those canvas bags that are that are right here. I took these canvas bags. Uh, nothing, you know, slid around. I, I put these chairs down so they wouldn't move. Um, I actually did forget to, so these are the flower pots that I have on my windowsill and the flower pots are, are for not just flowers eventually. I forgot to take those down. So I did the entire 200 mile trek roughly um, with those up on the windowsill. This one did fall, but nothing was damaged. It just kind of fell onto the floor. And this one actually stayed the entire, entire way up. I was actually pleasantly surprised with all of that. So that was nice. I built this thing to be moved. It is a metal frame. The beautiful thing about having a metal frame house is you can move it multiple times and it's not going to wear and tear like a wood frame would. That's why I went with a trailer made trailer frame kit. And that's exactly why I did it because I knew I was probably going to move this multiple times, even though I said at the beginning that I wasn't going to do that or, well, I just, you know, I know myself too well to not, to not understand this. So today is going to be cleaning day. Uh, I got to go back to my property. I got to get some stuff off of there. I got to close it. So my property has been sold. It is done. Uh, I am now putting the tiny house at my friend's place for just about a month. I don't tell people like all of my plans that are in here. So I'll kind of voice some of them right now. The property was sold and the only way for me to close on the property was to move the tiny house. Well, the tiny house has been moved now. So now I can officially close on my land. I have to go back there. I got to clean up some stuff and get some stuff off of that. So that'll be done today. And then I'll close on that. And then the entire month, roughly, I'm going to A, try to sell it because this is up for sale. But if it doesn't sell, I have a plan B set up. My buddy that just bought 10 acres in the great state of Maine, uh, he offered for me to put the tiny house on his land. He would manage it while we can rent it out and we split revenue. A lot of like tiny house villages, they actually do it that way. It's the same thing. They manage it and they give you either a 50-50 split or 60-40 split or, you know, whatever the split is they do a revenue share with you. That's pretty much what I'm gonna be doing as a plan B. I would actually like to sell this to somebody that is either going to use it as an Airbnb or use it as a primary living situation, but that is the plan right now. The plan is to try to sell it for the month, uh, and then if it doesn't sell, I'll move it over to my buddy's place, which he will manage it for me while I travel 
in the Sandy Van van that is being built with my design that Steven Stolp has been building that is a partial owner of Sandy Vans. That will all be transpiring this summer, I guess. I'll be traveling in that van, going to shows, doing speaking events and all that stuff. And then after the summer is when we're gonna figure other things out. If I still own this, we'll figure this out, whether I'm gonna move it out to the West Coast, but I am going to be relocating back to the West Coast. I did my time here in the, the Northeast. I love it here, I'm from here, but I need to go back out to the West Coast for various reasons, that personal reasons that I don't need to tell everybody here for. How did it ride? Let's see, how did it ride? You know, I, you know my F-250 pulled it easily. Um, however, I really didn't break 50 miles an hour. I just did that for precautionary reasons. I didn't wanna be doing 80 with my freaking trailer on the back. I don't even think you're supposed to do that anyway. So driving at that speed, it was fine. There was no movement back here of anything. Again, designed it that way. Uh, the next vlog I probably do will be my trip out to Tiny Fest, which will be happening on March 16th and 17th. If you guys haven't gotten your tickets and you are in the area of Del Mar, California, please go to Tiny Fest and you can go to tinyfest.com, I think, or tinyfest.events as I think the website. Uh, I am also doing VIP van tours. So there will be a VIP van tour where I bring around a group of people to all a bunch of different vans. We talk about designing, building, doing it yourself, hiring a builder. All those things are gonna be covered in my 60 minute VIP tour. And I do three of those per day. So if you wanna sign up for the van, IP, van VIP tours or VIP van tours, you can do that also on tinyfest.events. So check out all that information out. I got a merch line coming back. I should say coming out soon enough. I'm revamping my website. Check all that stuff out. And I'll check you guys later, next time. Later.